the first calculation that we need to look at is the break-even point. And the break-even point is the activity level at which there is neither a profit nor a loss. Now you can either perform this calculation in units or in rand. If you are required to calculate the break-even point in units, we take total fixed costs and we divide by contribution per unit. And remember, contribution is sales minus variable costs. On the other hand, if you are required to calculate the break-even point in rands, we still take total fixed costs, but instead of dividing by contribution per unit, we now divide by contribution margin. And contribution margin is just contribution divided by sales. So please make sure that you study these formulas. There's no excuse for not knowing the formula. Now, when performing these calculations, should you use actual or budgeted figures in your calculation? Now, I want you to think about this logically. It doesn't make any sense for a company to calculate their break-even point at the end of the year when they already have their actual results. At the end of the year, they will already know if they've made a profit or a loss. So this information is not valuable at the end of the year. Instead, these calculations should be performed at the beginning of the year because the break-even point tells us either the minimum number of units that the company needs to sell so that they don't make a loss, or if we perform the calculation in rands, it tells us the minimum rand value of their sales that they need so that they don't make a loss. So these calculations should be performed rather at the beginning of the year. Now, if we are performing these calculations at the beginning of the year, you won't have actual figures. At the beginning of the year, we will only have budgeted figures available. So please note, guys, you should use budgeted figures when performing this calculation, unless you are specifically told to calculate the actual break-even point. Obviously, if in the required they tell you to calculate the actual break-even point, then you must use actual figures. Or, if budgeted information is not available, so in the question you might only be provided with actual information, then you are obviously forced to calculate the actual break-even point. But if you have both actual and budgeted information, and the required just says calculate the break-even point, you should then use budgeted figures in your calculation. Let's go and have a look at the lecture examples. The following production costs per unit are available for Shazam Limited. We have direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overheads. The following were the total costs for June 20X6, direct labor costs, and variable manufacturing overheads. The current selling price is 300 Rand per unit, and fixed selling and admin costs amount to 50,000 Rand per month. In the first part of the required, you need to calculate the break-even point in units for Shazam Limited for June 20X6. All right, guys, now I recommend that you start by writing out the formula, because once you have the formula, you'll then see what other calculations are required. So if we want to calculate the break-even point in units, we need to take total fixed costs and divide by the contribution per unit. And how do we calculate the contribution per unit? It's the selling price per unit minus the variable costs per unit. Now it's important to note that your fixed costs and your variable costs are taken into account in different places in the calculation. So it's obviously important, based on the information provided in the scenario, you are going to have to identify which costs are fixed and which are variable so that you take them into account in the correct place. So that's what I recommend you do first. Go back to the information that's been provided and identify what costs are fixed, variable, or semi-variable. So first we have direct material. And direct material is obviously a variable cost. We then have direct labor. And because you are specifically told that this is direct labor, that is also a variable cost. 
Then we have manufacturing overheads. Now be careful. Manufacturing overheads is going to include all of the manufacturing overheads relating to Shazam Limited. It will include both your variable manufacturing overheads and also fixed manufacturing overheads. So unless you are specifically told it's a fixed manufacturing overhead or a variable manufacturing overhead, you need to assume that this cost is semi-variable. In other words, it includes a fixed portion and a variable portion. Now before we can calculate the break-even point, we are obviously going to have to split the semi-variable cost into its fixed portion and variable portion. Then just below we were given some total costs for June. And the reason why we were given these total costs is to help us split this semi-variable cost into the fixed and variable portions. Why am I saying that? Well, we said that this manufacturing overhead is a semi-variable cost. Now, just below, you've been given the variable manufacturing overhead in total. So we know what the variable portion is. So if we can work out what this cost is in total, because we have the unit cost, so if we can say 48 rand per unit and multiply by the number of units to get that cost in total, if we then deduct the variable portion, we'll be left with the fixed portion. So that's how we can split the semi-variable cost in this question. Now another problem that we're facing is we don't know the number of units that were manufactured in June 20x6. If we want to calculate this cost in total, we need to take the 48 rand per unit and multiply by the number of units. So first we need to determine how many units were manufactured in June 20x6. And you can easily perform that calculation because you've been given the direct labor cost per unit and we've also been given the direct labor cost in total. So if we take this total cost and divide by the cost per unit, that will give us the number of units that were manufactured in June 20x6. So you can see that calculation over here just below. In June 20x6, they manufactured 5,000 units. We can then calculate the total manufacturing overhead. We know that the manufacturing overhead cost per unit is 48 rand. So take the cost per unit, multiply by the number of units to get that cost in total. We now need to split this cost into its fixed and variable elements. So take the total cost, deduct the variable portion which you have been given, and you'll be left with the fixed portion. So that is my fixed manufacturing overhead. Then just be careful with the variable manufacturing overhead. Remember we want the variable cost over here per unit because we are trying to calculate contribution per unit. So take the variable cost that you have in total, divide by the number of units so that you can get the cost per unit. And we have successfully split the semi-variable cost into its fixed and variable portions. All right. Then we were also given the selling price of 300 Rand per unit. We are obviously going to use that when we are calculating our contribution per unit. And we were also given fixed selling and admin costs. Now please be careful here, guys. This is a common mistake made by students. Often when performing a break-even calculation, students want to ignore period costs or non-manufacturing costs. And that is incorrect. The break-even point is the point where the company does not make a profit or a loss. So any cost that affects profit or loss must be taken into account in this calculation. So fixed selling and admin costs, even though this is not a manufacturing cost, so even though it's not a product cost, it is a period cost, it won't be included in the value of inventory, it will be expensed in the period incurred. This cost will still affect profit or loss. So please note when you are performing break-even calculations, you must take these costs into account in your break-even point calculations. And obviously this is an easy one. You were specifically told that the cost is fixed, so we have a fixed cost there of 50,000 Rand per month. All right, so let's wrap this up. First, we need total fixed costs. So just above, we calculated the fixed manufacturing overhead to be 150,000 Rand. 
So you can just bring that down. In the question, you were given fixed selling and admin costs of 50,000 Rand per month. So include that in your calculation. Those are all of the fixed costs in this question. So we have total fixed costs of 200,000 Rand per month. And please note, we are calculating the break-even point in units for June 20x6. So we are calculating the monthly break-even point, which means we need to use fixed costs per month in our calculation. If you are calculating the annual break-even point, you then need to include annual fixed costs in your calculation. All right, you'll see that's discussed just below over there. Then we need to calculate contribution per unit. So we calculate the contribution per unit by taking the selling price per unit and deducting our variable cost per unit. So the selling price per unit was given in the question. For the variable costs, direct material and direct labor were both also given in the question. For the variable manufacturing overhead, we calculated the cost per unit just above. It's 18 Rand, so you can include that in your calculation. Now please note guys, just for exam technique purposes, you might need to use this variable cost per unit a little bit later in your calculations. So I recommend that you always calculate a subtotal over here. So calculate a subtotal so that you have your variable cost per unit, just in case you need to use that a little bit later. And then sales minus your variable cost per unit will give you your contribution per unit. We can then answer the required and calculate the break-even point in units. So just take your total fixed costs and divide by the contribution per unit. Then, please note with rounding, guys, you'll see this gives you an answer of 1,015.23 units. Now, obviously, the company can't sell part of a unit. But you can't follow normal rounding rules because if you round down to 1,015 units, then the company won't break even. They'll make a small loss. So whenever you are calculating break-even points in units, you should always round up to the nearest whole number. So you'll see we need to round up to 1,016 units. Now it's important that you always understand the logic behind these calculations. So let's look at this alternative calculation which uses logic. So we are going to calculate the break-even point using our profit formula where profit is equal to sales minus variable costs minus fixed costs. And if we are trying to calculate the break-even point, our profit is zero. And we are trying to calculate the number of units that the company must sell in order to break even. Or in other words, the number of units that they need to sell where profit is zero. So we are going to let the sales volume equal Y. That is the unknown that we are solving for. So sales is made up of your selling price per unit multiplied by the number of units. So the selling price per unit is 300 Rand. So total sales will be 300 Y because the number of units is Y. That is the unknown that we are solving for. Similarly, your variable costs are made up of the variable cost per unit multiplied by the number of units. So if you look above, we did calculate that subtotal. Our variable costs are 103 Rand per unit. So 103 Rand per unit multiplied by the number of units, which is Y. That is the unknown we are solving for. We also calculated our fixed costs previously. We have fixed costs over there of 200,000 Rand per month. So by applying logic, we know that the break-even point is the point where the company does not make a profit or loss, so my profit is zero. If we now solve for Y, we'll get the number of units that the company needs to sell in order to break even. So the break-even point formula is actually derived from this profit formula over here. So please make sure that you understand the logic behind the calculation. Then, in the second part of the required, you now need to calculate the break-even sales value for Shazam Limited for June 20x6. So we just calculated the break-even point in units, and we now need to calculate the break-even point in rands 
or the sales value. And we calculate the break-even point in rands by taking total fixed costs and dividing by the contribution margin. So, there's no change in our total fixed costs. Total fixed costs are still 200,000 rand. We just need to calculate the contribution margin. And we calculate the contribution margin by taking contribution and dividing by sales. Now, you can either perform this calculation in total or per unit. So if we perform the calculation in total, you'll take total contribution and divide by total sales. Alternatively, if you perform the calculation per unit, you'll take the contribution per unit and you'll divide by the selling price per unit. Either way, you'll get exactly the same answer. So in this question, it makes sense to perform the calculation per unit because we have already calculated the contribution per unit and we have the selling price per unit. So it's easier to perform the calculation per unit. If you go above, there's the contribution per unit that we calculated, and there's our selling price per unit. So calculate your contribution margin. You can then calculate your break-even point in rands by taking your total fixed costs and dividing by that contribution margin that we calculated above, and you have your answer in rands. Then in the third part of the required, I now want you to calculate the selling price per unit if Shazam Limited wants to earn an after-tax profit of 720,000 Rand in June 20x6. And you can assume a tax rate of 28%. All right, guys, so we have a formula that we can use if we want to calculate the break-even point. But we don't have a formula in order to calculate a certain selling price to achieve a certain target. So I refer to this as a weird required. And a weird required just means it's a required where you don't have a specific formula for this calculation. And wherever this happens, if you are required to calculate something and you don't have a specific formula for that calculation, you can always come back to your profit formula, where we calculate profit by taking sales, deducting variable costs, and also deducting fixed costs. And then whatever you are solving for, that is the unknown. So in this part of the required, you need to calculate the selling price per unit. So you are going to let the selling price per unit equal Y. That is the unknown that we need to solve for. Now you are not calculating the selling price per unit for the company to break even. You need to calculate the selling price per unit for the company to earn a specific profit. They want to earn an after-tax profit of 720,000 Rand in June 20x6. Now please be careful. In all of these calculations, we are always using profit before tax, not profit after tax. So what you need to do first, you've been given the target profit that they want to achieve after tax. We need to first calculate that target profit before tax. Because in this calculation over here, we are going to include profit before tax in our calculation. All of these CVP calculations are based on profit before tax. So if we have a tax rate of 28% and they want an after-tax profit of 720,000 Rand, you just need to multiply by 100 over 72 to get the profit before tax. So we need to calculate the selling price per unit. So that's the unknown. That is why the selling price per unit if they want a profit of 1 million rand before tax. So in your profit formula, you include the profit before tax amount, not the profit after tax amount. Then all of the other amounts are straightforward. We know that sales is made up of the selling price per unit, which is Y, multiplied by the number of units, which we know is 5,000. We already performed the calculation previously. We know that in June 20x6, they manufactured 5,000 units. 
Then, for variable costs, we already calculated our variable cost per unit. The variable cost per unit is 103 Rand. So if we want the variable cost in total, we take the variable cost per unit and we multiply by the number of units. So by 5,000 units. We also already calculated our fixed costs previously. Go back to the previous calculations. Fixed costs were 200,000 Rand per month. So guys, if you solve for Y, you've then calculated the selling price per unit that they must have if they want to achieve an after-tax profit of 720,000 Rand. And you'll see just below, I have included the proof to show you. If the selling price per unit is 343 Rand, and you deduct the variable cost of 103 Rand per unit, multiply that by the number of units to get your contribution in total, deduct your fixed costs, that will give you a profit before tax, deduct tax at 28%, and that will give you your profit after tax. So please note, guys, in all of these calculations, we are always using profit before tax. And in addition to that, if you get a weird required where you don't have a specific formula, you can always use the profit formula to solve. So for example, they could ask you to calculate the variable cost per unit in order to achieve a certain profit, or the fixed cost in order to achieve a certain profit. Whatever you are solving for, whatever the unknown is, you let that equal Y and you solve.